Caddis Maximus here again, this time with a review and comparison of unique and specialty pliers. I've done quite a few plier videos recently, and this will be the last uh, video to really finish up the whole pliers collection. And these are just all the pliers I can really fit in many of the other videos. So let's go ahead and actually jump into this, and we'll start off with some of these sergeant pliers. We actually have a genuine pair of sergeants right here as well as a kind of a knockoff set of sergeants. Now these are actually just utility pliers with standard cutters in them, but the cutters are external up on the top of the jaw, which is kind of interesting. And actually I kind of appreciate that because it makes it the cutter a lot more useful. The other unique thing about these sergeants is that the jaws move in parallel. The jaws have cutouts in the backs of them, as you can see here. Those cutouts ride on additional pins so that they, they open and close absolutely parallel. And I find when I really, when I'm trying to pull on any kind of plastics or textiles or maybe the leather top here, uh, they're really great in that aspect because they don't just pinch on like one part or the other. They're grabbing a hole on the entire surface. What's interesting is there's this other pair, which is uh, a knockoff. There is no branding on this set, but it's essentially the same thing, the very same a copy of the pliers. The one thing I did want to point out on this set is it has the most unique handle I've ever seen. This is uh, cotton string, but it's actually wire reinforced. There's steel wire in it. And some kind of custom wrapping, I assume it's wrapped and then pressed onto the handles. And then the way they knotted it, you actually have these tall ridges. And that's one thing I wanted to show here is that uh, as odd as this is, it would actually be kind of nice to tool manufacturers try different things for handles like these. I really like these. I like the they're not that uncomfortable at all. Uh, you get a nice, good, solid grip. And then the ridges really work well. I've never had issues with them sliding off. Um, and I just wanted to point that out, that sometimes uh, it's real interesting, some, some of the things manufacturers do. And the fact that parallel opening and closing uh, standard utility pliers actually do exist. We do have some other things like fencing pliers. These actually are pl styles of pliers that there's quite a few YouTube videos about. And I just decided to include them here. We have both one a set from Crescent I paid too much money for. And then I have actually $10 isn't a bad price. And we have a set of Olympias here. Now, fencing pliers are designed for you to twist fence wire together, untwist fence wire, cut it. It has a grabber so you can pull on the fence wire, a hammer face to hammer in staples, and then, of course, a claw to pull out staples. And the Olympias are actually have a pretty nice design, but I do like the Crescents here. The Crescents seem like they're just a little bit heavier duty. They have a bit wider cutting jaws. Another thing I wanted to point out is they have a bit of a flatter tops. So when you're pulling on the, these Olympias here, this real sharp edge digs into the wood when you're trying to pry out staples, where this works a little bit better. You can, of course, grab staples in the little cutouts in the front, like right here, and also remove them. And that's where I've used these for. Not so much for pen fencing, but there's been often times when I need to replace cabling that was held in by staples. And really, this set of pliers was the easiest thing to use to go ahead and remove and pull those staples. So I just wanted to point that out, fencing pliers. So if you ever see those, that's what they are for. We have another set. With This is a Nordic Forge. Uh, number 116, and I'm not exactly sure what one of these is for, but I'm sure, or I'm hoping one of my subscribers will, but I believe this is an upholstery set of pliers. It's obviously very strange. It has aggressive teeth that point inwards, and then it has this large gap, and then the bottom jaw is, of course, curved upwards at almost a 90-degree angle. And so these are very odd, but I assume they're for kind of grabbing hold of upholstery onto the edge of something rocking it over so it pulls it tight and then you would staple it. That's what I'm assuming they're for, but I had a real hard time finding information on those. Actually, I couldn't find any information, but wanted to point out that there's really some pliers out there that are just really oddly shaped. We have some small nut buster pliers right here, and these are Tiokos, and I don't, you can barely see the laser etching on these. There you go. And under a uh, magnifying glass, I look, this is a very early form of laser etching where it isn't just a continuous draw, but it's actually like a dot matrix. I initially, I thought it was silk screen, but it's way too durable of a image to actually be a silk screen. But that's what these are, uh, kind of like little pipe pliers. They have a very curved bottom jaw 
and a actually a pretty steeply curved upper jaw and the teeth are just at the top and the way these are designed is as you push you would push on this the lever that's attached to the bottom jaw and the harder you push the tighter that they grip and actually I found these to be handy in many situations where I just have a small little fastener that I just need to grab and um, and adjust or remove that's pretty well stripped and these things have just worked out excellent they've you know the jaws aren't the hardest you can see they've gotten a little dinged up from me using them I didn't I did buy them used but I thought that was just real interesting that they make real small uh, nut busting or self tightening pliers that are also angled straight rather than off to the side which has also been handy for me and then being a small size they've really been and there's some situations where it's just been tough to get a socket or even a wrench in there and the nice thing about these is you can either be on the flats of the bolt if I can get this to adjust there we go or you can be right there right on the corners and it still works pretty well so I did want to point that out we have a pair of like I believe performance tool and a nicer pair of Napa KD these are spark plug uh, not spark plug but spark plug cable pliers and they've been hit or miss these KD tool or these uh, excuse me performance tools are just really weak the jaws end up bending they're actually almost useless and to tell you the truth I'm not sure why I keep them around but they really they were just grossly insufficient for actually many spark plug boots especially on you know if they haven't been removed for tens of thousands of miles get really stuck and to make such a weak set of pliers is just uh, real short-sighted the Napa ones the metal is at least twice as thick I like that they have little raised areas so it's easier for you to get a grip either pushing or when you're pulling off and that they have uh, a nice wider set of jaws so you can actually scrunch or grab onto the spark plug wire pretty hard and then go ahead and pull it out and these are usually set at a 45 degree angle but whenever you see kind of odd pliers like that that's what they are there's four pulling spark plug boots boots I should say and uh, these Napa ones have actually worked fairly well there's a lot of different designs of these but generally speaking you do want heavier duty ones not light duty ones they just never end up working out for you we'll get to this and actually this we'll get to that in a minute these are brake spring pliers and to tell you the truth so in rear drum brakes you have a series usually of three pretty strong springs uh, that you have to pull on and off different pegs those are the springs that cause the brake shoes and the drum brake to retract uh, when you let up off the paddle pedal and these are I believe pliers that are used to help you attach uh, these springs to the the various posts inside the drum brakes and the reason I'm not 100% confident is I've never actually used these for drum brakes. I used a slot head screwdriver method to, to uh, put the springs on and it turns it into literally like a two second process. You just put the slot head, you just hook the spring up to the brake shoe, put the slot head through the loop, and then you just take and run the flat of, and it has to be a small, pretty long slot head up to the top of the post. And then you just lift the slot head and kind of push the spring and it will just slide off the screwdriver right onto the post. It makes it almost, it's unbelievably easy. You know, even on larger van and truck brakes, uh, it works. And I just, I've never used any other method since learning how to use a slot head screwdriver to put on those uh, springs. Uh, I've never used anything else. Most people are amazed that I can put on all three springs in like five to ten seconds. So what I really like about these is these are a set of pliers that actually spread apart versus close together. And even though I don't use these on brake springs, I use these quite often. There's so many times when I have a body panel and I'm prying on it, there's various methods where I can just get this right under the edge of the body panel and then just allow me to pry it apart, applying direct force linearly, not bending the, not a body panel, but like interior plastic panels, instead of bending it and really uh, putting a lot of strain and breaking those plastic connectors, these allow you to get under there and then just pry it apart with the force being much more in line with the plastic peg in it, uh, really has given me a lot of uh, success. Or you just have those pegs, you just put this up as far as you can go and just spread it apart and they just pop no problem. It's just been really great for any of those situations where you need to pry something apart but the but you just need you need more of a pushing action 
like you are inside the small gap and then pushing it apart to really put the force where you need it and not worrying about cracking or bending or breaking the plastic items. And this has just been fantastic as well as service and repair while I'm trying to uh, pull apart cases on power tools and that kind of stuff. Uh, you can find a little place and then use these to actually pry it apart. And they've been absolutely amazing in that regard. Moving on, these are some type of, I think, GM uh, injector pliers or something. I'm not sure if that's correct. To tell you the truth, I have no idea what these type of pliers are for, but I'm hoping uh, this will be another instance where one of my subscribers or viewers, I should say, uh, because I don't always, uh, don't always know uh, exactly who's commenting whether they've subscribed. Most YouTube subscriptions are actually uh, set to private, so I can't actually see, uh, you know, correlate a specific comment with a specific subscriber. Anyway, these are just kind of odd pliers, but I knew that uh, there would be a situation I'd run into where I'd really appreciate having them, and so kind of hoping somebody can tell me what those are. Moving on to a small collection of four pliers here. These are related to glass and tile. These are actually known as tile splitter pliers. Uh, they're both Japanese made. And if you ever see these, they're the odd pliers where the jaws don't come together and they have carbide teeth centered into the end of the jaws. And how these work is you would grab a hold of edge of a piece of tile and squeeze and the hard carbide will chip and usually either break the tile or you can pry a little bit and it'll and it will shear or fracture uh, the piece of tile. And so that's exactly what these are for. Surprisingly enough, in stores, they're kind of expensive, um, but definitely invaluable for making fine adjustments to tile and actually stone, slate, that kind of thing. And so I just wanted to show what those were for. Those are tile shearing pliers. And then we have a couple glass working pliers. I believe they're for glass working, like these dragons here. I should show that, there we go. These, I, and I believe they're for glass working. Somebody told me that, uh, that when you fracture a piece of glass, you can put these pliers on and this put a little bit of pressure and it'll actually cause the glass to break. Although I'm not positive about it, it seems to make sense because they're really odd and they only grab right at the very front and they have a really wide gap in them. These are a similar situation, but they're integrated into one unit. You know, they're, these are made in Great Britain, but they have a little carbide wheel, which you would score the glass with on the back of the plier. And then you flip it around and you just grab the edge of the, right along the seam that you just etch with the carbide wheel. And you just press and that little thing comes over center and just folds the glass and causes it to fracture. And so that's what those kind of odd plier looking things are for. These are actually glass cutting pliers. Moving on, there are odd, otter pliers. Here's a, another set of pliers. I'm not sure what they're originally intended for, but I call them beaver tooth pliers. But you can see they have one jaw that's just slightly curved and pretty flat. And then the other jaw with a big uh, hook that comes off the edge of it. And actually, I found these quite handy. Uh, primarily for the reason when you're prying on something, this hook allows you to really get over the edge of certain things. Also allows you to get on top of certain uh, certain types of objects and actually press down, uh, which has been quite handy, as well as certain types of pulling operations. And so there's yet yeah, there's just so many different styles of pliers, and this is just an uh, another uh, unique set. Down here we have the Corbin. These are actually spring hose clamp pliers that are, you know, in all these automo cars, they all use those spring hose clamps. I used to not like them as much, but I realized why they use them. The reason that you wouldn't use a uh, standard worm, uh, you know, worm screw hose clamp is that they can't expand or contract. And so when parts heat up and you have a screw, worm screw hose clamp, the hose ends up getting repeatedly compressed and leaks. And I've... I uh, had turbocharged vehicles and really had a lot of issues. I went with a bunch of stainless steel worm drive hose clamps and had leaks. And when I went back to uh, spring clamps, I actually stopped having leaks. And that's because the spring clamps can expand and contract uh, when the engine heats up and cools down and not does not put as much crushing force onto the hose. Um, in that regard, I've since gone with Otaker or OTC type hose clamps. Those are the clamps that are usually found on the boots of uh, axles. Um, and they make those just for 
uh, hoses as well, and they really work nicely because they give you the kind of real positive engagement like a worm screw clamp, but also have some spring action like a spring clamp. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. But that's what these are. These are not actually slip joint. They're just single pivot pliers that uh, allow you to grab a hold of the little tabs on those spring clamps, and they have some various cutouts for both straight and uh, it looks like about 45 degrees. And just allows you to clamp and be able to move those back and forth. So Corbin, I believe, is who really invented them because they have this patent on their pliers. And then we have another set that looks exactly the same. These actually are Corbins, but they've been rebranded uh, OTC or Owatonna, the KC-18s. The one difference here is that the OTT, I don't know if these had the little ring like this and it fell off. Or if they just didn't come with it. But one nice aspect of, those, of these OTCs is once you get the spring clamp uh, closed down... You can use this little ring to hold the pliers, so it's like a lock for the pliers, so it can hold the uh, hold them tight, and then you can grab a hold of the pliers and then muscle and fiddle around with the spring clamp without also having to try to keep them closed with your hand. And I thought that was actually real ingenious, and so that's on a purpose of that's kind of what the purpose of these pliers are for. And oddly enough, I found that they work pretty well for hog rings too. Uh, just because of these slots that are in the middle and the little indent uh, just holds a hog ring perfectly and you can just sque uh, squeeze it right down. And then that's what the little ring is for if you ever see that. A couple of final specialty tools I believe are medical related because they're uh, real smooth and stainless steel. Here's a set. These were made in West Germany. All they say inside is 64. And then this is the one real distinction. I'm hoping somebody can tell me what brand, but it has like a picture of a Siamese cat sitting on what looks like a hamburger. That's the best way to describe what the little icon looks like. Let me zoom in a little bit. So what's interesting about these is they have kind of uh, three positions. They all do the same thing and they're all have these curves in them where the center part passes beyond the top edge of the curve. And so I have no idea what they're really meant for, but surprisingly enough, I found a pretty good use for them. Now you can see where the ones on the sides don't come down quite as steeply as the one on top. But what I found these to be really handy for is I have pieces of metal and oftentimes it's kind of a uh, fidgety to use pliers to bend them back. Say this piece right here where I have this bend and I really need it to be straightened out. This is where I found this to be absolutely invaluable because I can just put this in here right about where the bend is if you can see. And just use them as a real nice set of pliers to go ahead and adjust. And that's just been absolutely invaluable for me. I really have appreciated these so many times with pieces of sheet metal, wire, various things where I just need to make a fine adjustment. And these allow me to do that in a very controlled fashion. And so I just call them bending pliers and that's what I use them for. I have no idea what their intended purpose was, but it's one of those situations where you can find a tool that you have no idea what it's for or how it's supposed to be used, but find a situation where they really work well. And as far as bending small pieces of sheet metal and wire, these things are just great because you can just get all this fine control and get real precise bends. Uh, they work great for springs too, if you need to adjust the hook shape or something on a spring. Really handy set of pliers. The final ones are these really uh, heavy duty shears, and these are very odd because the way the shear shoe actually comes up through the bottom, it is serrated, and then the outer blade is actually this cutout here. So they've been broached. It's a uh, definitely a pretty complicated design. And then it has a flat part and a little tongue on the bottom. So you can cut and then release, move forward, and then cut again while gliding on a surface. And so these are actually have been handy in a few situations. Uh, where you're cutting plastics, or I, that's what I've used them for, is to cut plastics where you can just notch it and then move forward and then notch it again and it doesn't deep upset the surface, uh, it doesn't get jammed up, and I uh, thought they were pretty interesting. So maybe somebody will tell me what they're for, but to give you an idea, they're also great for certain situations where you need to notch things, etc. And you just use them like this, and voila, we've got a nice little notch. And so I wanted to point out these, and maybe somebody will tell me what those are for. Maybe, maybe there's like some type of cast, cut for cutting casts or something like that. Anyway, that was just a quick review and overview, or maybe not so quick, 20 minutes, of various specialty forms of uh, and unique pliers. 
And just wanted to finish up my plier series with this. I think I'll move on to crimpers next. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching, and I really appreciate everybody who has subscribed. And if you haven't subscribed and made it this far through the video, please do subscribe. Once again, Caddis Maximus out.